CAN bus has been used on many vehicles starting in the mid 2000s and oftentimes a CAN bus issue can cause problems with communication with the vehicle and a whole host of other problems. So in order to diagnose it, we really need to use a lab scope to be able to look at the waveform. So there's a couple different ways we can do that in the tool. So let's look at a couple. All right, so as I said, multiple ways. So one way we can start is going through guided component tests. Inside guided component tests, if before we even ID a car, there's a category that says classes. Now if I go in there, there's a couple different ways in here, but I'll just pick one. Under how to, you can scroll down and there's 65 different categories of classes in here and all sorts of diagnostic information. You can check out some of our other videos on that, but down here we have a 20 minute CAN bus class. So if we go in there, you can see difference about basics and fundamentals, voltages, error handling, etc. All right, so now if we go into waveforms, you can see that we have, here's an example of a typical signal, that's what looks good. Here's another example of one that's when one of the wires is open, one of the other wires is open, etc. Now if I go all the way down to the bottom though, it tells us how to hook it up and where to hook it up. And then if I hit view meter, it's gonna automatically set up the voltages and set up the time so I can get a pattern on the screen. Now for me, this is a little bit close. It's good for examining whether or not the pattern condition is good, but I wanna see one entire block of this pattern. So we can do that. We can change this to our heart's content. So if I go up to meter and open that up, come down here, pull up my settings and we see it's tested 200 microseconds. That's 200 millionths of a second is what we're looking at. So I wanna go a little bit further out. So I'll tap on that and let's go to say 500 microseconds. Now I can see multiple blocks of data on the screen. So now I can change my slope and we see we have a trigger point over here that I can move. I'll try and move that up and over here a little bit. There we go. So now I can capture one of those in the center of the screen. I also like having them kind of close together so I can see how they're working there. So I'm going to drag these up. There we go. So now you can see how they're kind of right close together. Now once we have it on the screen, we can then pause the recording and now we can look at one entire block of data. So this would be some sort of data coming out of a module on a vehicle. Now this is an example of a good pattern. This is what it should look like. Now let's turn on our cursors though and take a look at what the voltages are on this and see if our voltages are in range. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my measurements on the bottom here, oops, there we go. All right, so we have two different states as you can see. One state is where both channels are level and that is what we call an idle state. It's not transmitting any data at that point. It's just kind of sitting there waiting for data. So at that point, according to the CAN bus spec, it should be roughly two and a half volts on both channels. And in this case, we see 2.47 and 2.469. That's very, very close to each other and very close to uh, uh, two and a half volts. So that's good. Then when we transmit, the high side goes up by about a volt, volt and a quarter. Low side goes down by about a volt, volt and a quarter, and that's where it's transmitting data. So ones and zeros is what computers speak in, right? So it's binary. So ones and zeros, off is one, and then uh, on is a zero. So we can see that if we compare the voltages there, it goes up to 3.457 and down to 1.511. That's 0.998. And 0.957, that's pretty darn close to about a volt on either side of that. So that is a good pattern. That's what it should look like. If it was shorted to ground, we'd see glitches coming down here. If it was shorted to five volts, it'd be up at the top. 12 volts would be off the screen. If I had any noise in there, that would indicate an issue with the bus as well. Now also on some manufacturers, not every manufacturer, but some manufacturers will have this larger spike at the end. What that is, is that is an ACK bit or an acknowledgement bit. That is like, I like to call it like the period at the end of the sentence. That's when that module stops sending data. That's the end of my data. And whoever comes next is, is just an, another module on the bus. So being able to look at this with the scope and being able to analyze it and realize what's going on with the bus can help you diagnose some of these issues. Now I did say there was another way to do this. So this is one way through guided component tests through the classes. Now if I back out of that, so we can also go through the scope multimeter. So if I go in there and I go to my lab scope, my four channel scope, and we can see it's already preset. I already had this open earlier to look at this. And you see it looks very similar than it did on the other screen. Now, if I did have an issue with the signaling, a couple different ways we could figure out what modules causing the problem. One way is we could use the codes and it might point us in the right direction. Problem with U codes is sometimes they're a little tricky. Otherwise, I can find a suspect module, unplug it and see if the pattern gets better. 
If I unplug a module and the pattern gets better, then that's the module that was causing the problem. If it doesn't get better, then I would just reconnect it and move on to the next module until I found whatever module was causing the problem. Now, as far as connecting this to the vehicle, what I've done is I've hooked up with an OBD2 breakout box. What that is, is just, it just plugs into the OBD2 port, and then you have a box with 16 banana jacks where you can plug in your test leads. You want to plug in on pins 6 and 14 for the main CAN bus network in order to test it. And then you can also hook up a scan tool to the other side of that box if you needed to communicate with the vehicle as well. So a couple little tips and tricks. Hopefully that helps demystify CAN bus a little bit for you. We hope you found this clip helpful. Find hundreds of other quick tips and useful training videos right here on the Snap-on Diagnostics YouTube channel.